I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes to the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Either we heal as a team or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. I literally, I, I am Mr. Optimist. You know, I am Mr. If you work hard enough, anything is achievable. I am that guy who gives it all. And I honestly have to say, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know if there's a plan or what. Um, knowing that you know, there, there's some people you, you look at and you say, okay, we can, we can replace them. But I'm beginning to wonder, is this the tank? Is this the... We're just getting out from all the cap hell and we're starting over or what? Um, I had said that, you know, Dak Prescott, that, that maybe the best thing for him is to go elsewhere. And then Miss Jackie, shout out to Miss Jackie. She shared this with me and, and I could understand his feeling. Let, let me share this with you. This is Tad talking about his brother. He truly wants to be a cowboy for life. Like, I'm not joking when I say that boy grew up worshiping the Dallas Cowboys. Him being drafted by them, whether it was, you know, pick number one or pick, you know, Mr. Irrelevant, that was his dream. And to be their starting quarterback, their face, their franchise, that's something I know he wants to continue to do. How I feel about it, uh, it again, all bullshitting aside, is truly how he feels about it. I support him no matter where he wants to be, no matter what he wants to do. I've made the comments on Twitter that I want him out of Dallas. Again, that has been more so to the fans that constantly write me or DM me that your brother ain't shit, your brother will never win, your brother's nothing. So I'm like, well, well cool, get him out of Dallas so you can see what this franchise <laughs> would look like without 12 games the season, without a guy that constantly puts y'all in position on the playoffs. Could he have a better playoff record? He'll tell you himself he could. But still, like I said, over the last three seasons, this guy has 36 wins in the regular season. So and you just want to get rid of him. He truly wants to be a Cowboy. All right. So we, we know Dak Prescott, he wants to be that guy. He wants to be the quarterback for life for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, which kind of gives the advantage to the Cowboys a little bit to – do whatever they want because it doesn't matter. You you're almost like it's almost like it's a cult for Dak Prescott. I'm a, you know, all my friends are gone, all the people that helped to make me great are gone and I don't see any reinforcements. Um I don't know. I don't know. Um Miss Jackie, of course, she sent me a a, a, a statistic there which was before the Cowboys signed Eric Kendricks that, you know, this was after everybody, everybody had signed somebody except for the Cowboys at one point. They were the very last ones to get on the board, and they, of course, have spent the least in free agency. Now, I'm not trying to say that it's the be-all, end-all to spend a whole lot of money in free agency. You can't build a Super Bowl team solely by free agency. You have to have at least a good base, and this is where um, we have to understand that you still need other players. You can't just let go about 13 or so players and say, we're good. So they were playing this. This was on um, uh, Greenies thing. And this, this kind of statistics is kind of interesting. Let's listen in. Some of the Cowboys being the one team that have not gone all in they've gone literally the opposite of all in they've gone all out and jerry jones saying well we're all in on free agency and they've literally are the only team to have basically done nothing so far and i wondered is that criticism of that might it actually be a good strategy like do the teams that jump all in on free agency 
wind up actually reaping the benefit of that? Or does history tell us that not spending big money um, at the beginning in particular of free agency is the smarter move? Yeah, smarter move. I like that. Let's go. I was surprised, but the answer is not what you want it to be. What? So Hembo looked it up. We went back 10 years. We looked at, over the course of that time in each year, the top three spending teams and the bottom three spending teams in each year. Mm -hmm. So over the, that's, that's 60 teams overall. And the numbers came out the following way. The teams that spent the most money wound up improving by an average of two wins per season, right? They got two wins better in the next season. That's right. Of the 30 teams, 21 improved their record. Two had the same record and only seven had a worse record. So your chances are very good of increasing your win total by spending that money. Conversely, it is an equal opposite reaction. The teams that spent the least wound up losing one and a half more games per season. That's right. Of those 30 teams, 18 had a worse record, five had the same record, and only seven improved their record. So th th there you have it. It's seven out of 60 in both cases. You're trying to thread that needle. It's, it's 14 out of 60. So what is that? What, what percentage is 14 out of 60? It's a pretty small. 15 out of 60 would be 25%. So it's not even that. So if you are one of the lowest spending teams, which they're not assured of being yet, but they certainly feel like they're headed that way on an express train, the Cowboys are, to being one of the three lowest spending teams in free agency. They're the lowest ever. Then year. you only have about a 14% chance or whatever that number at. I'm, I'm, I know, 20 something percent chance. I'm very bad at that, but whatever. You just heard the numbers of increasing your win total the following season. I thought it was good research. I was glad we were able to do it as quickly as we did because I think that is instructive this week. I was very surprised with the results. Um, when I go into a project like this, I usually expect something and that's often affirmed because it has long been my belief that free agency is a good place to waste money. In reality, if you spend it properly, it can go a long way in immediately improving your team. By no means do I believe that you can build your team through it. That's not the way to do it. But what you can do is supplement your roster through free agency and for a team like the Cowboys, who actually is pretty close to the top of the mountain, I, I do think it would have behooved them to be a lot more aggressive early in free agency rather than just basically wait and hope for bargain chips to fall at the very, very bottom. But honestly, it's kind of what we should have expected given the state of the salary cap right now. Well, that's what I think it is, Bubba. I think you are being hamstrung. Your team is being held hostage, if you will, by the Dak Prescott contract right. and by the pending contract demands of C.D. Lamb and Micah Parsons. I think they're, they're sort of handcuffed. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the numbers are interesting because I was kind of thinking the same thing with, with Hembo where it's like, oh, these big spenders, a lot of times you always say, oh, this team spent the most and they didn't really improve. So I was surprised. That is interesting, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I still got faith that they'll mess it up some, at some point later on. The too. problem is they didn't have to be a big spender. Mm -hmm. They just didn't spend at all. Like yeah. Derrick Henry didn't cost that much. Patrick That's Queen the didn't one. cost that I was hoping they much. got at least Derrick Henry. And they Henry. didn't get either, and they lost Tony Pollard, so they got worse. All right, so there you have it. That is...